Our story Tuesday about Winston Churchill and Idaho's border got us thinking about Idaho's shape. If you didn't watch, here's what we're talking about. There's a theory out there that Idaho's northeast border was shaped after Winston Churchill's profile. See it there? It does kind of look like a profile of a face. Obviously, the Churchill theory is not true. It's just an urban legend. But how did Idaho get its weird squiggly shape? For the answer to that, here's today's edition of Get to Know Idaho on this Idaho Statehood Day. Yes, Idaho's border with Montana does look a little like someone's profile. Churchill, Bob Hope, maybe Richard Nixon. There are lots of theories as to how Idaho got its squiggly shape, and retired Idaho State historian Keith Peterson has heard them all, but never the Churchill one. <laughs> I had never heard of that before, and I had a hard time envisioning it. There's even a theory that a drunken surveyor is to blame. Well, um... <laughs> It, it's a curious, it's, it's a long story. But for the real story, we'll start by using a good old fashioned map. You can see most Western states, starting with the Dakotas, are somewhat uniformly shaped, which is exactly what Congress wanted. But they wanted the, the, the states that came into the Union in the West to all be very rectangular, which is why we get, you know, Colorado and Wyoming and Utah, those sorts of states. And for the most part, they did that pretty well. But then there's Idaho. Most of our borders are straight. The southern, southwestern, and southeastern borders, but... There are a couple of peculiarities, especially that one with Montana. The top 70 miles of the Idaho-Montana border are straight. Again, Congress trying to impose as much orderliness on the landscape as they could. So what happened to the rest of it? You can blame that on this guy. Sidney Edgerton, Chief Justice of the Idaho Territorial Supreme Court. The Idaho legislature wanted to have a border at the Continental Divide, which would be considered you know, many miles to the east of where it is today. But Montanans had already gotten their hands on Edgerton, so to speak, and persuaded him to lobby Congress in their favor and move the border west of the Continental Divide. When Edgerton went back because all of the gold activity was west of that line. He lobbied Congress successfully for a border on the Bitterroots, and there was no one else from the Idaho legislature back there to talk to Congress. And so Edgerton carried the day, and when Montana territory was established in 1864, breaking it away from Idaho, they specifically delineated that line along the Bitterroot Mountains. The Bitterroot Mountains also give Idaho its famous panhandle. That panhandle would not have been nearly as narrow or as isolated had the Idaho Territorial Legislature one day and the border had been on the Rocky Mountains instead of the Bitterroots. So that's how the state got its shape, or at least part of its shape. One person can influence history.